So the next series of notes is going to be a few additions to the MIPS instruction set. Uh, this is going to allow us to do a couple of simple things that we've already sort of talked about in class, uh, but I wanted to have a video about it. Uh, these are the shifts and the multiplies. And then we're going to spend a bit of time talking about floating point, which is uh, sort of the next extension to the way we represent information. Uh, and it's important to have access to that so that we understand the difference between integer operations on a machine like MIPS and floating point operations, which are significantly more complicated. Uh, so first we'll talk about shifts and then we'll skip ahead uh, in this set of notes to multiply and then we'll come back and look at floating point. Shift operations uh, use the shift amount field or a register in order to store the amount to shift. So instead of just shifting one bit at a time, you can shift uh, as many as 31 bits up from zero shifts up to 31 shifts. It's a five bit field, so it represents from zero to 31. Uh, and you can do that by representing either the shift amount here as a number. So you would say shift left logical, for example, into T0, whatever's in S1 shifted by two. Uh, and that would be a shift left would be um, would amount to a multiplication by two. Mostly. There are some situations where a shift doesn't exactly equal multiply, and we'll get into that. But in general, shifts are to move information around, uh, and you can make use of that feature to multiply and divide in some certain circumstances. Uh, so regular shifts look like this, shift left logical, shift right logical, shift right arithmetic. We'll talk about the difference between logical and arithmetic shifts in a second. And then variable shifts are called variable because the shift amount is stored in register uh, RS. Uh, and that means you can set the amount to shift at runtime instead of having to lock it into the instruction at compile time or assemble time. There are some reasons to both of these things. Um, the shift variable shifts mean you have to spend the extra step of calculating the shift amount that you're interested in. But it also means that you can shift by a variable amount during the operation of the machine if you decide <laughs> that you need a different amount than what's hard coded in the instruction. Uh, so here are some examples of what shifting actually does. If we start with a one register containing this number, which is just a seems to be a random string of ones and zeros, um, and then if t one contains the number three, then uh, if we were to say shift right logical into a zero, whatever's in a one by one, then we shift to the right in this direction. And the question then is what comes into the bottom end when we shift? Well, when we built our shift register in the first half of the class, we would shift in a zero at the bottom end. And so that's what happens here. We shift in a zero uh, in the bottom end or in the top end or whatever end we're shifting in. Uh, and that's a sort of a standard protocol for shifts. When we shift in one direction, we fill the rest of the register with zeros. And then if we were to shift left logical by two, then we'd shift in this direction by two bits. Uh, and you can see why shifting by more than 31 bits probably doesn't make any sense because uh, if you shift by 31 bits, uh, you've actually shifted basically the entire register almost. Uh, and so there's no point in shifting by 32 bits because in fact, we have this example down at the bottom where if you were to be allowed to shift by 32 bits, you would end up filling a register with zero. So this is actually not permitted because 32 is one zero 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 zero. Uh, and we don't have, oops, 32 is one zero 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 zero, and we don't have six bits for our shift amount, we only have five. So the most we can shift is actually, um, the most we can shift is one, 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 which is 31. So let's see what happens then if we do a shift right arithmetic. Now this is a special kind of shift uh, that we're gonna use when we are considering signed numbers. Uh, if we have a two's complement number and we shift it, then uh, we have the potential to lose the sign, bit, right? Uh, imagine, uh, let's do an example just on paper here. Uh, if we imagine a situation where we have an eight bit number, um, let's even do a four bit number to make it super simple. Here's a four bit number. Uh, uh, that's a signed two's complement number. And if that number, uh, if we were to flip the bits and add one, what we would get is four. So this is negative four. Now, if we're free to shift it to the right in this direction, uh, by our regular shift, we'd put a zero in the front, and that would give us zero, one, one, zero, which isn't negative two, right? It's positive six. And so that sort of defeats the purpose of being able to use shifts for multiplication and division if when we shift, we get rid of the sign bit. So instead, we're going to implement a different kind of shift called an arithmetic. And an arithmetic shift, or arithmetic shift, 
um, is one where we preserve the sign bit. So rather than shifting in a zero, we're going to take that 1100 zero, zero, and we're actually going to replicate the sign bit. Just copy the sign bit instead of shifting in a zero. The logic is super simple. You just have a, a multiplexer here to decide whether you're going to shift in a zero or shift in the sign bit. And then what you get is 1110, one, one, which if we flip the bits and add one, we get two. So this is negative two. Uh, and so we go from negative four to negative two, and we find that a shift right arithmetic preserves the sign bit and gives us uh, the result we might expect when dividing by two using a shift for a signed number. So we have a shift right arithmetic, uh, and that allows us to shift in this case by five, and we're going to shift five sign bits into the uh, into the register. So whatever number this is, this is a great big negative number. Whatever number that is, the sign will be preserved even as we continue to divide by two five times. Um, so that's fine. So then the next example is shift left logical variable, which means we shift by the amount that's stored in T1 rather than shifting by the amount that's stored in the shift amount. Uh, and T1 contains the number three. And so we're going to shift left logical by three. And this example, again, as I said, is incorrect because we can't actually shift by 32. The most we can shift by is 31 because the shift amount field contains five bits. And we can look at that if we look at the, um, at the R format instructions again on our sheet. If these are all of our instructions on our sheet and the R format instructions, we look at the format for our R format instructions. Uh, what we find is we have this R, S, R, T, R, D, and then the shift amount which we haven't used before, but this is what we use it for, is if we want to shift a variable, um, shift a register, that shift amount is contained there. And then the function code. And so if we wanted to do an encoding of a shift instruction, we could look at shift left logical, and we would see that the encoding is actually all zeros for the opcode and all zeros for the function code. Uh, and then to find out how much to shift, you would put an amount in the shift amount. If we were shifting left uh, by a variable amount, again, the opcode is all zeros because it's still an R-type instruction, but then instead of looking in the shift amount, we would look in the register specified uh, by RS, and that would give us our shift amount. So those are a few examples. Now we notice uh, that the difference between arithmetic and logic shifts, right? Arithmetic shifts shift in the uh, propagate the sign bit or replicate the sign bit. Um, shift and logical shifts shift to zero in at one end or the other. And so logical shifts treat the numbers as unsigned numbers or just logical collections of bits. And arithmetic shifts treat the numbers as if they were um, signed bits. <clears throat> However, you might notice if you look on the sheet uh, that there is no arithmetic shift to the left. There's only an arithmetic shift to the right. Right. Well, let's have a look at that. Why would that be? Why wouldn't we want to shift um, two's complement numbers to the left just as much as we want to shift two's complement numbers to the right? Well, let's take that same example, one one zero zero, and try to shift it to the left. Well, if we shift it to the left and reserve the sign bit, in this case, it's the same because we have a sign bit here that we could shift into it. This becomes one zero zero zero. Uh, and this is negative four, we know this is negative eight, so that's fine. So that would work. Whether or not we preserve the sign bit, the result is the same, right? We can either copy the sign bit, throw this away, and sort of copy it, move it to the sign bit here, or we can just ignore it uh, and then shift out and shift a zero into the back end, right? Really, when we're shifting, the question is, what do we shift into the space made by the shift? And if we're, the space made by the shift is at the right side of the, of the bit stream, then it doesn't interact with the sign at all. Now, what happens if we have a situation where our shift doesn't have enough ones to sort of maintain the sign, right? We can imagine a situation like this, which is negative one, and then we shift to the left, uh, which we get negative two, and then we shift to the left again, we get negative four. We shift to the left again, we get negative eight, well, now we're going to have a problem, right? Because when we shift, if we sort of carry on that pattern, we expect to get negative 16, but we don't get negative 16, we get zero. So shouldn't we try to preserve that sign? Well, if we were to preserve the sign, then the other option would be to get one zero zero zero, which is also negative eight, which is also wrong. 
Uh, both of these cases are incorrect because no matter what we do, if we take a number that uh, doesn't have a uh, bit that is the same as the sine bit beside it, and we try to shift it to the left, we're going to get a wrong answer no matter what we do. So there's no, we don't have to try to preserve the sine bit. If there's enough bits that are the same as the sine bit, we'll get the right answer. If there aren't enough bits that are the same as the sine bit, we'll get a wrong answer, regardless of if we try to preserve the sine bit. So in fact, SLA, if it existed, would be the same as SLL. And as we've seen in MIPS, in situations where the uh, there is a, an instruction that is the same functionality as another instruction, we don't implement it. Right? We could use a pseudo instruction if we wanted to to convert SLA into SLL, but more likely what we would do is rely on the person writing the code to just know that SLA doesn't exist and we should use SLL instead. Um, and so again, we get this theme of MIPS relies on the programmer to know what they're doing rather than trying to help them out. And it's a very different sort of philosophy from the high level languages to try to help our programmers out rather than relying on them to know everything.